In this video we're going to graph these two lines and then identify the slope and y-intercept. So we'll start with example 1, y equals 3 over 2x minus 2. Um, we're going to use the table method because I want to get at least three points so that we can really have a look at that slope. If we do the x-intercept, y-intercept method, we'll only have two points and it just won't be as much fun. So. Um, we'll do the table method for these because it kind of works out a little bit better. Plus the table method is more useful for later math classes when you need to graph <laughs> y equals x squared plus 3x minus 1 or something like y equals square root of 3x minus 4 or y equals um, x cubed minus 4x squared minus 2 things like that. These all have to be done with the table. Every single one of these. Okay. So the xy intercept method um, that we practiced before, you know, where you let x be 0 and then let y be 0, sorry, <coughs> where you let x be 0 and then let y be 0, that method only works for straight lines. So it's only going to work for this one chapter, but once you get on to later math uh, 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 classes, you won't be able to use the x-y-intercept method anymore. So in any case, that's why there's many reasons why the table method is, is very important. Okay. So in any case, we'll just um, plug in some numbers for x, like we'll plug in 0, and calculate what y is, and then we'll plot the, the line, right? So if x is 0, y is 3 over 2 times 0 minus 2, right? So that is 3 over 2 times 0 is what? 0, right? Minus 2 gives us what? negative 2, right? So first point is 0, negative 2. And now, what should we plug in for x? Remember, you could, if you wanted to, you could plug in 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, if you want to. You know, if you want to do that, you can. It's just that when you plug in 1 and you're dealing with a, a fraction with 2 on the bottom, a half, 3 over 2 times 1 is going to give you a fraction. Now you have to deal with fractions and you have to try and plot fractions. So you get 3 over 2 minus 2. That's 2 over 1 times it by 2 over 2. And uh, now we have, um, you know, 3 over 2 minus uh, 4 over 2. So that makes negative a half. Uh, but now we have to try and plot that, and that's not as easy to plot, okay, because it, it's not a definite point, it's a fraction. So, when you have a 2 on the bottom, what do we like to plug in as inputs for x? Do you remember? Multiples of 2, right? So you can plug in x is 2, and what else? What's another multiple of 2? x is 6, or 4, or 8, or 10, or whatever. We'll just do 0, 2, 4. How about that? So when x is 2, calculate the y value. Press pause and do that. Okay, I'll do it now. When x is 2, y is going to be 3 over 2 times 2 minus 2, which is... And remember, this 2 can be written 2 over 1. So we have 3 over 2 times 2 over 1. That gives us 6 over 2 minus 2, which is 3 minus 2, which is 1, right? So we get 2, 1. And when x is 4, what's y? <coughs> Press pause and do that. I'll do it now. It will be 3 over 2 times 4 minus 2, right? And you can write that 4 as 4 over 1. And of course that gives us 3 over 2 times 4 over 1, that's 12 over 2, minus 2, which is 12 over 2 is 6, minus 2, which is 4, right? So we get 4, 4. And these are nice points without fractions, and it just makes it easier to plot. And of course at this point you could have cross-canceled, 2 into 2 goes once, 2 into 4 goes twice, 3 times 2 is 6, okay? Or 2 to 2 goes once, 2 to 2 goes once, 3 times 1 is 3. So you could have skipped a step by cross cancelling, right? 
Okay, so in any case, plotting those points, x is 0, y is negative 2. We get that point. x is 2, y is 1. That point, x is 4, y is 4. That point, right? And then just join up the points. And that's our line, right? But what we want to do most of all is to have a look at the slope of this line, okay? Because, and the y intercept as well. Now, um, here's our points on the line, okay? And we'll start with the y-intercept okay this is the x-axis this is the y-axis where does it go through the y-axis goes through the y-axis at negative two right um, so you could say the y-intercept is negative two or zero negative two either way right <coughs> so we could call that just you know negative two on the y-axis or we could also call it um, 0 negative 2 okay and 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 that's the y intercept okay now the slope of the line what is the slope of that line can you get the slope of the line how do you get the slope of a, of a line remember slope equals rise over run write that down okay Okay, what is the rise and the run of this line? Well, if you want to go from this point to this point, and remember, when you're reading, you always read from left to right. Look, graph the lines, identify slope. See, I'm going from left to right, okay? So, and the number line goes from left to right as well. Everything goes from left to right. Okay, so if we go from left to right, let's take a point, let's take this point, and we'll go to this point, okay, here to here, right? If I only go from there to there, I can go up diagonally, or I can go across two, and I'll be right underneath this point, okay? So I've run across two, so my run is two, and then I would go up one, two, three, up three, my rise is three, see that? So run 2, rise 3, and sure enough, the slope is 3 over 2. Now, have a look at the equation. y equals 3 over 2x minus 2. What do you notice about the equation? Do you notice that 3 over 2 occurs here, right in front of the x value? And that is the slope. Where does negative 2 occur? Right here, and that, in fact, is the y-intercept. Now, the y-intercept is called B, okay? So the letter B is uh, negative 2, and the slope is called M. So M is 3 over 2, right? And uh, the general equation for, the general equa the slope-intercept equation for linear equation is Y equals MX plus B. So you can see that m, the slope is 3 over 2, and b is negative 2, right? So let's do example 2, and I want you to press pause, graph the line, and identify the slope and y-intercept yourself from the equation and from the line. Okay, and make sure they match up. Okay, so I hope you press pause and tried it. Please press pause and do the whole thing yourself, then I'll do it, okay? So I hope you pressed pause and tried it. I'm going to do it now. So we're going to make a table, and we're going to plug in some x values. We'll certainly plug in 0 to begin with, right? And we should get negative a third times 0 plus 4. And that would be 0 plus 4, which is 4, right? Now, we have a fraction in front of the x and it's a third, right? 
So what should we plug in as far as x values go? Do you remember? You can plug in 1 and 2, but if you plug in 3, then you'll get cross-canceling and you'll get a nice whole number. So if you plug in multiples of 3, it'll work out nicely. Give me another multiple of 3 to plug in. 6, or 9, or 12, or 15, right? So, if you plug in 3, we get negative a third times 3 plus 4. Plug in 6, negative a third times 6 plus 4, right? So press pause and calculate those points if you haven't done so yet. I'll do it now. So, negative a third times 3. 3, by the way, is the same thing as 3 over 1. So that's negative 3 over... 3 plus 4, which is negative 1 plus 4, which is 3, right? So we get 3, 3. And then negative a third times 6 plus 1. 6 is 6 over 1, and that gives us negative 6 over 3 plus 4, which is negative 2 plus 4, which is 2. So we get 6, 2, right? So we have 0, 4, 3, 3, 6, 2. These are our points, right? So we can plot those points, x, y. These are the x's, these are the y's. x value, x axis, y axis. So 0, 4, 3, 3, 6, 2. Right? And if we join those points up with a straight line, here's our straight line. Okay, and from this graph, can you find the slope and y intercept? Press pause and just find the slope and y intercept from the graph. Okay, so what's the y-intercept? The y-intercept is where the line hits the y-axis, right? And it hits the y-axis at 4. Or you could say the point 0, 4, right? So that is the y-intercept, right? 0, 4 or 4, whichever you, what way you want to call it, it doesn't matter. Now, the slope is what? Slope equals rise over run, right? Which is what? Now remember, we always go from left to right. When you're reading a book, you read from left to right. So if I start at one point, let's say this point, or this point, how about this point for a change, and go to this point, this point to this point, um, to get from here to here, I can go, go diagonally down, or I can go across, and then down, right? So how far do I go across, and how far do I go down? So I, I run, I run across one, two, three, and then I'm right above this other point here. So I run three, right? And then I go down. How far do I go down? Oops, let me show that better. How far do I need to go down now, right? Now, my run, therefore, has got to be three, right? And to get to the next point, I'm not going to rise, because I'm not rising means go up. But I'm not going to go up. I'm going to go down, right? So I'm going to drop 1. So my rise is negative 1, basically. Right? My rise is negative 1, and my run is 3. So my slope is, in fact, negative 1 over 3, because I actually dropped 1. So my slope is negative 1 third, right? My y-intercept is 4. Now look at the equation. Does that match up? So I hope we're learning that, sure enough, the slope 
m, which is called m by the way, the slope m is negative one third, and what's the letter we use for the y-intercept? b, right? b, this, the y-intercept is four. And we'll, above this we'll write y equals mx plus b, sure enough the slope m was negative a third, and sure enough the y-intercept b was four, right?